Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cutshaw with World Youth Loving. Today, my guest is Chris Prostransky. Hopefully, I said that right. And um, he, okay. yes, good. Um, he and I met through Honoré Quarters Group. And I'm so glad you came on today, Chris. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you very much, Bridget. Um, I'm Chris Bystransky. I, I am originally from Chicago and I moved to Texas about 23 years ago. I think I'm a native now, but uh, I was spent 15 years in the corporate world before breaking free and creating passive income streams uh, through real estate and, and now my book. So uh, we'll get into a lot more detail. So thank you very much, Bridget. That is, that is so cool. I, I'm curious what made you want to move from Chicago to Texas, because that's a big culture change and temperature change. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's, it's, um, it's funny. Uh, I turns out I did not like the cold, but I didn't realize that until I got to somewhere warm. So I grew up playing hockey and uh, was outside all winter long, no problems, went outside, played hockey all day long, you know, over the winter. So didn't really think much about it. And then in college, I played baseball and we went on a, a spring break trip to play baseball down in Florida. And when we left the Midwest, it was about 20 degrees with a foot of snow on the ground. And we got to Florida and it was 80 degrees with palm trees. And I was sold. Uh, I got out of the Midwest as fast as I could. And I ended up going to law school in Houston. So that's how I made a transition from the Chicago area to uh, Texas. That is so cool. I didn't know that backstory. That is, I know you played hockey. But I, as you know, I briefly lived in Wisconsin and I went to UW, but I did the opposite. Grew up in the South and went, to, but it was a good school. But as soon as I graduated, I got an opportunity to move back South and it was a shock for me. I had to learn how to drive in the, uh, drive in the snow, I should say. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely love the heat. It cannot be hot enough for me. Um, I am thin skin now and I don't do too well in the cold so I'm happy to be where I am in the in the heat so that is so funny <laughs> so um you said you got a law degree so was it what was your specialty in, in, in that? Or, I, I specialize in corporate tax and you know growing up I was always taught to uh go to school get a good education and then go get a good job and that was that was what I believed uh, was, the, was the way forward and the way I was going to live my life. I was going to climb the corporate ladder and got the law degree, practice law, and even went on to business school after that, after practicing law for about eight years. I went into business school. Um, I thought that would help me uh, to succeed and climb the corporate ladder even, even further. And that worked to a certain extent, but uh, it just... It, it just wore on me and I was not reaching my personal and financial goals and I was not spending the time, the quality time with my family and my kids. So I had to make a change. So I eventually left the corporate world. Yeah, that's true. I understand the, the same thing. I was told you had to do this and that to be successful, but it's not, it's not everything. Everybody needs to do the same thing and we're all different. And I think you were, you realize that. And so when you left, the corporate world. You mentioned real estate too. So is that what kind of helped you be self-independent or independent? Is that the right word? Yeah. So um, I wanted to go into uh, single family houses. I wanted to buy single family houses and, and just build up a portfolio while still working in the corporate world. But it turns out I did some research and talked to people who are successful in, in other commercial real estate. And I started investing in apartments. And as I learned more, uh, I just enjoyed it more and more and more. And I started investing in different properties around the country in, uh, in Georgia and in Texas and Florida. And my portfolio just grew from, from just a couple now up to uh, 12 now, because there was a couple of sales, but it was just this, just getting started and being around the right people and, and seeing some great opportunities come my way. So I took the action and met some, met some very successful people and they helped me, guide me, acted as coaches and mentors for me. And now I have a portfolio of properties that's growing, constantly growing. And now I'm looking for other ways to generate more passive income. Right. I, I would think in the beginning, just, I don't know how old you were when you started doing that. Was it, I'm assuming it would be a little stressful because you didn't know, right, what was going to happen, right, when you, you know, you know I'm trying to say a lot of people are afraid to do it because of their, they think about debt and stuff like that. But um, that's a different kind of mindset you have because you, you understood it a little bit better because you went 
to law school and you understood the tax aspect of it? Well, well, the great thing about the area that I went into in real estate, real estate is that there's only so much real estate in the world or in, the, in this country. So uh, it's a rare, rare commodity. So uh, the values just keep going up. And as long as you're in a right position, right state, uh, right submarket within that state, uh, you're going to do very well. And that has been a, the history. So uh, it's safe to say that that's going to continue to be a history. The location, the, the atmosphere, where people want to live. You just look for certain key characteristics and let time and uh, demographics uh, work in your favor. That's cool. And I think where you're living in Texas, it's a lot of growth happening now because of the, um, I shouldn't say the temperature, <laughs> the temperature is nice, but you got people from California. Uh, my understanding is a lot of people from California are, are moving to your state. Yeah, there's there's very big migration patterns around the country now. I mean, you see a lot of people moving from the northeast down to the southeast, uh, people moving from both coasts inland to, to Texas or to Arizona. So, you know, there, there's there's great areas around the country. I'm not um, saying anything negative about any parts of the country. I mean, I, I would love to, to, to go to California and, and, and vacation there. But the fact of the matter is it's just too expensive and there's too the taxes are too high. So there are certain states around the country that have lower taxes, good business climates, um, and, and good laws for business. So, um, and you see the migration patterns in business from whether that's individuals or businesses moving to those areas, to those states. And Texas is one of those states. Right, it's a, it's a big thing. My, some of my sons, his friends, a couple of his friends have moved to Texas. And I think one city's Dallas and the other is Austin. And mm -hmm. you live in the Houston area, so. Um, I've spent more time in like Austin because I used to work for a company, but then I'm dealing with my industry, a lot of consolidation, you know what I'm saying? So that's why everybody, I think that's part of it. Industries are consolidating and your knowledge is very, very helpful. I think for people to understand how to make take advantage, I should say take advantage of it, but for best benefit for you. Yeah. So, you know, Certainly, there's no one taking advantage of. But if there's if there's data available and you're paying attention, it's very easy to move from, let's say, for example, a corporate job into the world of investing. The biggest hurdle I had to overcome right away was I had this phenomenal education. I went to um, you know I had an undergraduate degree, I had a law degree, and I had a uh, an MBA from one of the top business schools in the world. And I had to overcome this mentality that I was simply going to climb a corporate ladder because that's what I was qualified to do. Right. I thought that other ways of creating income and, and get this, Bridget, I thought that other ways of creating income were beneath me because of my qualifications. Oh, wow. All right. So that's a significant issue that I had to overcome. And once I overcame that, by being around other people and watching their lifestyles, watching what they were accomplishing, uh, reaching their goals on a personal and, and financial level, I had to reevaluate where my mind was. And it's funny, after I had made that transition in my mind, I was able to ramp up my investing in real estate, okay? And I've had these conversations with some of the folks that I was involved with in the corporate world. And there's no way they could do it. There's no way they can make that transition because they were so entrenched in the corporate job mindset that they just could not. And they, they, they were where I was five years earlier, where this is my station in life. I'm working in this job or one very similar to it. And this is all I'm going to do. And by the way, I'm making a good living. So why would I make a change? And my thought process was, I see all these other people being uh, outside of the corporate world, being successful, going on trips, spending time with their family, giving more to charity, helping their communities, spending time with their families. When I was at work, you know, I had two, three, four weeks of vacation a year. They had six months of vacation a year. <laughs> and I had to reevaluate what I was thinking, what my beliefs were. That was the hardest thing. Once I was able to overcome that, 
the possibilities opened up, the, the opportunities to invest opened up. You know, when it went from a few real estate transactions to writing the book, now I'm doing some angel investings in a biotech company, investing in land uh, development. So there's all these things that open up. But the first step is getting out of that mentality of this is my station in life and I'm going to have this job or one similar to it for the next 40 years. That had to go before success could happen. And I think it probably helped, was helpful, like you said, to change your environment. Is the right word? Uh, and, and around other people were different examples and not just the, the status quo. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it, it's funny. Um, I started listening to um, podcasts. I don't know how I got on this, um, how, I, how I started listening to the podcast. I think some ad hit my phone one time and I just started listening to that instead of listening to the radio, uh, whatever the talk radio or the shock jocks in the morning on the way to work. And uh, when I started listening to the podcast, um, I went to their websites and it turns out that they had listings of live events that I could go to. So I got so interested to learn more that I wanted to go to the next possible event. And a lot of these live events, these live meetups, uh, they happen about once a month. Well, I just missed one in my area. Uh, there's a couple a couple miles away from my house. I just missed one. It just happened like a week ago. So I would have had to wait another three to four weeks for it to come around again. Well, it turns out that there was another one two days later, but it was 30 miles away. I went. I drove all the way there. And, you know, I still kind of had this corporate mindset, but I wanted to learn more. And I drive there, I get to the parking lot and it's at a restaurant or something at seven o'clock at night. And I'm sitting in the parking lot and I'm having this argument with myself. What am I doing here? What am I gonna learn from these people? I've got a great job. Think about all the education I have. What could I possibly get out of this? After 10 minutes of sitting in my car, I finally went in and it changed my life. Uh, what I heard people talk about the, the, the investments they were making, the possibilities, where they came from, and then just one, two, three years later, where they were because of real estate, because of the relationships that they developed um, in these meetups and just being around these successful people, it changed my life. And it was because I, had, I was able to have that mind, change the mindset of corporate employee, because that was really what I studied for to investor and hey, let's see what else is out there. And the, the rest, I guess you would say is history. Right, it, it's definitely a cultural change. You know, do you, did you experience, I know some people in the corporate world a little bit of burnout at all, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just curious. Absolutely, Abs absolutely. Um, I was doing the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. Incredibly boring stuff. Um, I was managing a team and, um, I, I, I loved working with the people, but it was, it was, I, there was no leadership at my, at the global company that I was at, right? There was no, um, immediate leadership in my, in my area. Okay. Maybe there was at the very high levels. I didn't see any of that. I had no direction, no guidance. I was just overburdened with policies and procedures People far away from the details were making decisions that affected me and my team. I, I was incredibly burned out. And I, I, I knew I needed to make a change. And that's why I finally decided to, to think about uh, buying some single family houses, which I did not do. I went into bigger stuff immediately. But the real, the real kicker was I had, I, I had some, I had little kids and it dawned on me one day that no matter how hard I worked, how high I climbed the corporate ladder, there was no legacy that I could leave to my kids from the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Right. It didn't matter if I became CEO, I could not 
let them become CEO to succeed me. Right. It didn't work like that. I'd have to work a long time, miss time with my family to climb, to continue to climb the corporate ladder. And then if I did not teach them another way, they would be destined to do the exact same thing. And if I didn't want that for me, I certainly didn't want that for my kids. So I wanted to do something to create a legacy for them. So I went out, started investing into real estate uh, because that has long lasting implications. And then I wrote a book about how I transitioned from corporate employee to investor and how I taught my daughter to do that. So I taught my daughter how to go from being an employee to how to make money passively through investments. I think it's awesome. And that's the book, Renting from My Six-Year-Old? Yeah, Renting from My Six-Year-Old. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, I take her through a, through a pretty, a pretty intense journey. So I've condensed my career uh, for her down to about a year. So it's a year of her life and how she starts making money and then how she starts investing that money and a change in her, the psychological changes that she goes through and, and which frankly I went through and we all go through. I see it in other adults too. When I talk about investing to them, when I talk to uh, the people I used to work with about investing, they get scared. They come up with all these different excuses why it won't work. She did the exact same thing, and I did the exact same thing. The book is about that trans transition, that transformation from employee to investor, and how the income grows when that happens. I like that. Where you're talking, it made me think of the word like financial health. We always talk about our health and well-being. We need to make sure. I mean, that affects our health, right? Is your your finances right? Absolutely, absolutely. Think about think about if they're not financially secure, right? There's constant worry, you know, there's health problems, there's marital problems, there's relationship problems, there's problems with, with kids if you're not spending enough time with them. Uh, so the financial health, it's not just greed. It's not just about me, 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 me. I want more, more, more. It's about what can you do with that? How rich can your life become? And because of that, how rich can you make other lives become? And how can you pass it on to kids? It's, a, it's important because we learn from your environment. I learned from my parents and yours too, and they were different culture back then, right? But it's about like what this podcast is about. We're having to adapt and be resilient because we're going to continue to have change, but you need to be um, surrounding yourself with the right people. And that helped you get over the uh, situation that you're in. And yeah. it's <clears throat> yeah, and sharing. <laughs> Uh, another one of the major breakthroughs I had was, hey, look, I can have a coach or a mentor. Five years ago, before I got into all this investing and in, in, in what have you and learning, a coach or a mentor was so far out of my mind because my thought process was, I've got a great education. I know what I'm doing. I have a great job. What in the world do I need to have that expense or, or the expense of time or money? to go get a coach or a mentor. What are they gonna teach me? And the mind, shift, the mind shift happened after I started meeting some of these very successful people. They all had coaches, they all had mentors. Well, now I have many different coaches. I have a tax coach, a tax planning coach, and I was a tax guy before, and now I have a tax coach. Mm -hmm. We talked about tax planning, tax strategy, uh, so that I can arrange my affairs to appropriately um, pay whatever taxes are based on my activities. I have a legal coach, even though I'm an attorney, because I have several entities. I have um, a book coach or an author coach. I have a success coach. Um, I'm training for triathlons now, so I have a triathlon coach. So all of these different people have helped me take my game to the next level. And I would not have done that five years ago. That is awesome, the stuff that you're doing to, because you're here and, and you're appreciating the time that you got here and you understand that. And I like that you're being a good role model for your, your children and you wrote this book. Are you going to have other, I, I think you, my understanding is you're going to have some more books down the road? 
Mm-hmm. I do. I, yes, I, I do. I absolutely, I, I very much enjoyed the process of writing. Um, and at the back of my book, I have 12 steps to um, help your family make money and, and keep the money. So I will go into more details in those 12 steps in a, in a subsequent book. Wow, I like, I like that you're focusing on the financial aspect for the family and not just an individual, because most of the stuff out there, that what I've seen, is not doing what you're doing, right? It's all about um, individual investments and, and things like that. And in real estate, like you said, it's, it's a long-term investment. And I think it's really helpful. And I hope that more people can get into it somehow. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we say that real estate is long-term, but it's possible, it's possible that some of these, um, some of these properties sell within a couple of years and generate a hundred percent return. And that's happened a couple of times already. So you think about that. If you invest X amount of money and you're expecting not to have much return for five or 10 years, and then all of a sudden, two years later, you get a hundred percent return because they sell the property. And because the market has increased so much, more people are moving into the market. So there's more demand than there is supply. Yes. And rents just rise and income just rises and people moving into the market are used to paying higher rent. Um, things increase in value quite quickly. I've seen here in Atlanta, they have a lot of people um, from downtown are moving in the suburbs. <laughs> Excuse me. So my area is really growing a lot, right? And they're doing a lot of investment here. And um, I'm, I'm seriously like, oh, you know, sell our house, make a lot of money, but like, then we're like, where are we going to live? That's the, that's the thing. That's kind of the predicament some people are in. Um, you know, I got to find someplace else to live. That's the whole sense. Right. I mean, if you're going to sell at the top of the market or wherever yeah. we are now, well, the problem with that is you're probably gonna have to go buy something also at the top yeah. of the market. So you kind of, you win and you lose at the same time. Right. It, it, it's still kind of cool. I mean, uh, I'm trying to get my sons to, to learn about this and I'm going to definitely recommend your book to them because I want them, like you said, have a legacy and make sure they're financially independent. I think that's important for your overall health, you know, and you're going to have less, less stress and I kind of have a, yeah, I didn't have a, I don't have a background as you, but I did a lot. I was going to be a CEO one day, right? But um, it was very, very stressful, but I, you know, had to travel a lot and had young kids. And now I am my own, do my own thing. And which is, it's just, it's a great feeling. It, it's more peaceful. I mean, there's some stressful moments, but it's just more peaceful overall. <laughs> and you can do that. Absolutely. It's a more balanced lifestyle yeah, that, yeah. that you have control over. That's, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. And that when I was in the corporate world, I, I thought I had control. I thought I had this constant money coming in. Well, it turns out that People get laid off in the corporate world, and it's not as rare as you think, Me. right? So, what kind of what? Well, I, it would not surprise me if everybody listening to this knew somebody was either laid off themselves at some point or knew somebody who was laid off at some point yeah. from from a corporate job. So, it's not as secure as you think it would be. And if you're not ready for that, you know the stress goes way up, and then you have to go and, and find another job if you're not ready. If you don't have other streams of income, right. so what are you going to do? You're going to go get another job and then put yourself back in that same situation. Well, that's not a win, a long term success story. You're making me also think they don't do, from my understanding, talk about finance as much in school anymore. I remember when I was in high school, we did. That was a long time ago. Um, but I don't think they're even doing that, right? I think they should be able to. Well, the, the, I, I don't think there's very much personal finance. Correct. You know, I, I think there's financiers like corporate finance. Right, right. But how do you, yeah. how does somebody as an individual or a family, how do they make money? Well, the traditional approach is to go get jobs. Right. And okay, but prices are increasing for things a lot faster than, than wages are increasing. Right. So if you're not doing something to supplement those jobs, the job income, you're actually losing money. So if you want to have a corporate job, fine. There's many, many ways to supplement that. 
you know, so <laughs> maybe you have a little side hustle and maybe that side hustle becomes the main job, main hustle when you need it. But the important thing is to start before you need it, because it may be a year, two years, three years to ramp up. And, and you don't want to be scrambling to do that um, when you absolutely need to. You want to do that a- ahead of time. I like that. It's planning ahead because you just never know what, like I had mentioned earlier, the industry I'm in is lots of consolidations happening. And that's, you know, the tech has changed in a good way, but we also need to um, also, I think, not just talk about the finances, but helping people learn new skills somehow. They, some people just don't, are just afraid and need mentors and coaches, like you mentioned. I think it's critical. Absolutely. And, and I think that all starts with the mindset. You know, do people, are people very comfortable where they are? Do they, do they, are they open to change or are they ready for change? Right. If you can, you can help the people who are ready for change and you can help the people who are open to the change, but it's very, very difficult to help somebody who is not open to something new. I like how you got to be open for change and write the notes down and then ready for change. I think that's really good. And we just, uh, seems to be a lot of, um, I don't know, I shouldn't say stress. I don't know why everything seems, seems more stressful. Maybe just because of the, what COVID and all that constant, I don't watch the news, but just constant information out there. And I think that's making more people more fearful for some reason. I don't kind of go off on tangent here, but it, that's just what I've seen um, here in Atlanta anyway. Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because when I was, uh, when I used to have to commute to work, I would listen to the news or, or maybe in the morning, catch a little TV and watch the news. And it was, you know, this was five, 10 years ago. And it was always this side said something about that side or that side didn't like something or that side's doing something wrong. And it's just this constant bickering and, yeah. and, 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 and it's not, it's not productive. It's not productive for the government or whoever, and it wasn't, certainly wasn't productive for me, but w- the reason I was listening to it was because I thought I, I wanted to be informed and I wanted to be able to participate in conversations when I got to work. And it totally made no sense. You know, I got out of that when I started listening to the podcast on real estate and passive income and generating Better. net worth. And the stress, as soon as that happened, the stress just went way down. I no longer cared what was going on. Um, with the politicians or the sports or this or that, because it really didn't impact me. You know, what impacted me was what I did on a daily basis in my, in my, in my life, in my house, in my community and things that I could affect. So that's where my, that's where my energy turned and the stress went way down. And then when I left the corporate world, I had more time to structure my days the way I wanted to. I mean, I mentioned before um, getting into the triathlons, I'm training now for an Ironman and I have two little kids. There's no way I would have been able to train for an Ironman effectively and be involved in my kids' lives and have a regular corporate job. One of those three would not, would have fallen. Right. But because now I have the flexibility, um, it just helps it, it helps reduce the stress. I can manage a lot more things. I have much more control and control and growth is what helps me keep stress almost to, to nothing. Also, you've created a discipline, that's the right word, a discipline to stick with those good, better habits, maybe. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's discipline, but it's, it's a constant decision every yeah. day. And I know that if I don't go do a workout, I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It's really strange. So I have what I, what I would consider uh, like a, a, a par or a bar, a bar that I have to be at. And if I don't do something, I feel like I'm failing that bar. And it's not too high. It's not ridiculous. Okay. But it's like, I feel like I'm off the path. And it, for me, it's very easy to see that I'm off the path. So for example, this morning, um, I went swimming. I swam a couple miles this morning and yesterday I did not go. And yesterday I felt off all day. And it was just because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. 
I have a goal and a goal helps me know what I'm supposed to be doing. And then it's easier to follow on the path, but then I have to make the decision all the time. But making that decision is easier if I know what I'm supposed to be doing. So for 15 years, whenever I was working in the, in the, in the corporate world, I didn't have a goal. I wanted to be CEO and I worked hard, but I was just floating, you know, and then I had kids and then it was like time became very, very critical. And I saw other people be successful and success became very critical. So now I have a goal and decisions become much easier because I know what I want to do. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, whether that's making an investment, doing a workout, spending time here or, or there, um, spending time with the family. I, I know what I'm supposed to be doing now because I have those goals. So I, the stress, the stress is gone. I mean, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. That's you had mentioned about the swimming thing. I, I noticed when I do run, I don't run every day anymore just because of my age. I get so much more done <laughs> in the day. I, it's just something that kicks in those endorphins and yeah. I focus better. Um, and for that, it's just something um, you know, I just like, like to do. So when you swim, do you, is it like a, a, a pool you go to at the gym or? Yeah, I go to a pool about 20 minutes away. So um, I, I kind of challenge myself to get there early. And I, I was there in the water a little bit after five this morning. Oh, wow. and it was great. I was done. I swam for about uh, 40 minutes and I was done. It was still dark outside. This pool's outside, which is wonderful. Yeah, uh, still dark outside. So, you know, I got home and still breakfast time. That's cool. I think that is, is you're a great example for people. And you made the, the changes that you needed to, to be with your family, and reach your, your goals, your financial health. Right. And I think you are disciplined more than you realize. <laughs> um, I, I do. I, yeah, I, I make simple decisions. Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I think that's where the discipline comes from. You know, do I, do I go work out or do I not? Yeah. Simple decision. It's not easy all the time, but it's a simple decision that I, I try to make every day and, and get the workouts in or, or, you know, read this book, you know, spend the time reading, spend the time learning. Um, simple decisions, not always easy, but pretty basic. And it, they're basic because I know where I want to go which is what I not, I did not always have that. I know where I want to go. So the path is pretty well laid out. And all I have to do is stay on that path with simple decisions. That's good. I love, that's one of my taglines, keeping it simple. I try to keep things simple because if it's too complicated, you won't decide, <laughs> right? No. You make excuses. Is there a book you recommend for people? Um, I was just curious. What's your most favorite recent book that you um I I just I just finished reading uh Never Split the Difference. It's okay. a book by Chris Voss on negotiations. Uh Chris Voss was a former FBI uh terrorist negotiator, and he walks through the psychology and the different uh negotiation types when life is on the line. That's cool. That's, that's good. And um I know you have other things on your table today, your calendar, where can people learn more about you, Chris? Where can they go to? Yeah, so you can just go to my website. There's a lot of information there and you can contact me. It's chrisbystransky.com. And that'll be in the notes, right? Because I don't want to spell that out because that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> for, for, the li for the listeners out there, I will have the link in the notes for this particular episode. And Chris, I think you're very inspiring. And I love the idea of what you're doing with your, your book, Renting for My Six-Year-Old. Just, just give a great example for kids, but they need to, they need to know this stuff, right? You, don't, you want them to make, we have to learn from our mistakes, but you want to reduce them financially, <laughs> the financial mistakes, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, have the right mindset and spend your time and money on the right, on the right things to help you make money and create the life of your dreams. That's renting from my six-year-old. It is not a kid's book. There are lessons that are applicable to kids as well, but it's for adults. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris. You're welcome, Bridget. Thank you very much.